Hey everybody, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and welcome to the next lesson in my Want to Switch tutorial series, taking a look at making a switch over to Avid's Media Composer or if you're a first time editor, getting up to speed at using Avid's Media Composer. Now, I've been an Avid editor for over 14 years and for me, there's no better nonlinear editing application on the market today than Avid's Media Composer. Now in this lesson, we're gonna take a look at probably the meat and potatoes of Media Composer, and that is editing. We're gonna cover basic editing, and we're gonna take a look at some extra little bells and whistles that you're definitely gonna to wanna to take advantage of to help speed up your overall workflow in Avid's Media Composer. Okay, a brief intro, let's just command tab into Avid's Media Composer, and let's get started. Now the first thing we're obviously gonna need is some clips to edit with. So let's navigate over to our clips bin. I'm gonna right click. We're going to link to AMA files. If you want some more information about linking to AMA files, check out my importing section of my Wanna Switch tutorial series. So I'm gonna say link to AMA files and let's just select a folder that I know has a lot of footage in it and that's Motocross. So I'm just gonna select everything. I'm gonna say open in a matter of seconds here. All of my clips will be in here ready to work with and I'm just gonna switch over to my clips view. Again, obviously if you want more information about bins, you can check out lesson three for more information about bins and setting up your views. Okay, so I have all of my clips in my bin and let's talk about getting footage into a timeline. And like I said before, what I like to do is I like to have a separate bin for my sequences. So I'm gonna create a new bin. Obviously you can click on the new bin button or for me, I'm just gonna hit command and N on my keyboard and I'm just gonna call this bin sequences. And what's important to keep in mind is that the way the sequences are created is the sequences are created with the exact settings that your project was originally set up with. If I click on format, you can see the project type is 720p 23976 and the raster dimension is 960 by 720. So that is the exact type of sequence that's gonna be created for me. What I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna right click and I'm gonna say new sequence or I could always right click on my sequence window and say new sequence. It's gonna to say to me, okay, well, where do you want your sequence to go? I'm gonna say in the sequences bin. And I'm simply gonna say okay, and we're just gonna call this wanna switch. Now, what I normally like to do, first of all, before I even do that, is I like to actually head over to my settings. And I like to come down to the general settings because inside of the general settings is something that you're gonna to wanna to set, especially, you know, you're gonna be creating sequences a lot and you don't wanna get in and do this after the fact, but I'll show you how to change it after the fact. But what I normally like to do is I like to set my default starting time code to be 59, zero 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 and that is obviously 59 minutes now how do you switch between drop and non-drop frame good question well it's as simple as coming back and putting in a semicolon instead of a colon now this sequence is going to be drop frame i can simply say okay and if you take a look up here at the top to my master time code you can see that it's still set to one hour well why is that well any sequence i create from now on if i say new sequence and i select that one that one is going to start from the time code that i had selected but because this sequence was already created with the one hour time code as its default, I can't get in and change it. No, I'm just kidding, I can get in and change it. And how we do it is very simple. I'm just gonna delete this other sequence I just created here. And what we're gonna do is with our sequence here, what I'm gonna do is simply right click and I'm gonna say sequence report. With sequence report open, I'm gonna change the starting time code here to be 59. Now here's a little quick tip that if you didn't watch the last tutorial, you're not gonna have caught, but I'll give it to you again, you know, just as sort of a little bonus. Instead of putting zero, zero like that, I'm just simply gonna hit the period that's on the numeric pad, and it's gonna put a double zero in for me. I'm simply gonna say apply changes, and then I'm gonna say cancel, and now you'll see that my time code for my sequence, the starting time code, has changed to 59 minutes. Now, why would I want to have it at 59 minutes? Well, in most cases, what's important to keep in mind is that you're going to have 40 seconds of bars and tone, 10 seconds of slate, and 10 seconds of either countdown or of black before your show starts. Now, in this case, I set it up like this, obviously, to explain that to you. So what we're going to do is we're just going to jump back into sequence report. I'm just going to set this to be one hour again. We'll say apply, and I'm going to say cancel, and it's back to one hour. So we're now ready to start editing with our clips. So let's come back over here to our bins. Now remember, because I'm working in my super bin mode, what I can do is just come down here and switch back to clips just like that. And let's pick a clip to start with. Now, you know, I like to have things organized in numerical view. You can see that I have my uh, 941 clip right down here at the bottom. I'd really rather have it at the top. Well, you know what? Again, something very easy to do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the name column just like that. And I'm gonna press Command and E on the Mac, Control and E on Windows just like that. And you can see that as soon as I did, the order swapped. So now 941 is obviously at the top 
which is the lower number, and 961 is at the bottom. Now, to get a clip into your preview window is very straightforward. All I'm going to do is simply double click on it, just like that. I can now simply navigate up, hit play, and there's the clip playing. Now remember, this clip isn't an imported piece of media, it's a link to, but it's really the same thing. And for me to edit this clip into my timeline, we obviously need two things. We need an in point and we need an out point. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to just before that first byte comes on the screen right there, and I'm going to mark an in point. Now again, obviously a couple ways to do that. I can use my in and out points right here and right here, but what I always tell people to do is don't edit that way. Edit with the keyboard. I is the shortcut for in point. I can simply hit play. And what I'm going to do is when I see the out point I want, I'm just going to hit O just like that. Boom. There's my out point set ready to edit with. Okay, so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to drag it down and I can actually drop this into my timeline to create a shot. Now you'll see what happened was is that when I dropped that down, I had a yellow arrow appear just like that. So what does that yellow arrow mean? Well, we'll get to that in just a second. Now you'll see that you can use drag and drop editing inside of Avid's Media Composer, but I don't really recommend it. It's not really a very comfortable way to edit. You know, even in Final Cut Pro, it's not exactly the greatest way to edit in my own personal opinion. I personally like to use the overwrite and insert edit keys. And those are mapped to B as in Bob and V as in Victor on your keyboard. Obviously those two keys are right beside each other. B representing overwrite, V representing insert. So let me just undo what I just did. Now for the first edit, it obviously doesn't matter what you choose, overwrite or insert. So I'm just gonna hit B on my keyboard. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the next clip again. We'll just hit play on the keyboard. I'll mark an in point right about there. And you know what we'll do is we'll get to about, oh, I don't know. Let's just say about there, we'll mark an out point. And what I'm gonna do is again, hit B on my keyboard. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back here and right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually add in an edit. So let's take another clip, we'll just double click on it. And let's just start it playing. And we'll let these guys sort of come around the corner right when they get to the first little jump here. And we'll mark that as our end point. Right about here, hold on one second. There we go, right there, there's our end point. And sure, we'll mark this as our out point. Right about there, perfect. So we were talking about overwrite and insert. Well, in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna insert this clip into my timeline. So I'm gonna use V on the keyboard. Now, obviously over here, you can see that I have overwrite edit and I have insert edit or called splice in. What I can do is I can simply splice it in just like that and you can see it takes the two clips and pushes them apart. I can again undo that. I can also overwrite that just like that and you can see it basically took it and plowed it in right over top. I'm just gonna undo that again. Like I said, feel free to use the buttons if you want, but for me, the keyboard is always the best way to go. You know, I'm gonna give a shout out to Didier Kennel who taught me Avid's Media Composer at Sheridan College, and he always said the fastest way to edit is one hand on the keyboard, one hand on the mouse. And you know what? It's never steered me wrong. So what I'm gonna do is just hit V on the keyboard, and there we go. You can see, if I back up here and I hit play, we have the one clip playing, and it's gonna edit into the next clip, just like that. And then it's gonna edit into the next clip, just like that, perfect, exactly what I wanted. So you can see we've done a very basic edit in Media Composer. Now, I was gonna save all of my effects work to the next lesson, but you know what? I'm gonna show you a basic effect, why not? Let's talk about the most basic effect of all, and that is the dissolve. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to this edit point, and what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to put a dissolve in between these two clips right here. Well, the shortcut for dissolve is backslash on your keyboard, or you can simply navigate up to this button right here, and it's referred to as quick transition. Now, I call it cross dissolve because the standard is always the dissolve, but the great thing with this quick transition is, is that you actually have access to dissolve, film dissolve, film fade, fade to color, fade from color, and dip to color. Now, this is always great, and I love this because this is something that's always, you know, you find yourself having to go and do multiple different effects inside of other nonlinear editing applications because each one of these ends up being an effect. Well, if I wanted to do a quick dip to color, let's just say dip to black and back, what I can do is just select dip to color, and I'm simply gonna say add, and there it is right there. And now all I have to do is hit play, and boom, there's my quick dip to black. Now, in most cases, you obviously wouldn't go that fast. So what I'm gonna do is just remove that, and I'm just gonna hit dissolve again, and what I'm gonna do is let's just set this to be, oh, I don't know, let's set it to be 24 so it fades out and fades back in. You don't even need two transitions. You can just do this with one, just like this. 
Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, how did I remove that effect so quickly? Well, I have a command mapped to my keyboard called quite simply, remove effect. So what I'm gonna do is navigate over top of my effect and right here is the shortcut for remove effect. I happen to have it mapped to F5 on my keyboard, but here it is right here. I'm simply gonna say remove effect and there it is, it's gone. Now let's go back in, I'm just gonna hit backslash again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set this back to be dissolved just like that. I'm simply gonna say add. And what we're gonna do now is just hit play and guess what we have? A nice simple transition from one shot to another, just like that. Now the reason that I wanted to mention this is because some editors like to edit on multiple tracks. So let's create a new video track. Again, a couple ways to do that. I prefer to use the shortcut, but if you wanna use the long way, you can navigate up to clip and simply say new video track or the shortcut command and Y on your keyboard. So let's just hit command and Y on the Mac, control and Y on Windows. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select a different shot. Let's just select 948, we'll throw it up here. And I'm just gonna quickly mark in and out points on the shot right about there. Now what I can do to get video one onto video two is one of two things. I can click on video one and hold it and drag up to video two just like that or I can simply quickly click on video one and drag a little arrow back to video track one, just like that. Or what I can do is simply turn off video one and turn on video two and video one will snap up to video two because that's the standard settings for your sequence inside a media composer when you create a new user setting. So you can see three ways to get this clip here up onto the second video track. What I can do, and I'm just gonna remove this effect right here just like that and let's just bring our clip back up to the top is I'm just going to mark an in point right here and we're going to hit B on our keyboard to edit it in just like that and now what I can do is I can hit dissolve on my keyboard and we'll just have this start at the edit and I'm just simply going to hit play again and what's going to happen is just like we did before that shot's going to fade in. Now the reason we saw the edit was because our dissolve is too long and we're going to come back here and play it again that's okay and there we go and what's gonna happen is when this is done, it's just gonna cut out back to video one. Now for me personally, I like to keep all my edits on one track, but I wanted to show this to you because I know that editors out there like to work in different ways, so it's important to understand the differences, and I just wanted you to see how simple it is to work that way inside a media composer. Now of course, what project would be complete without sound? So I did happen to bring in an audio clip. I'm just gonna double click on audio, and I wanna bring this over here because I just wanted to show you the differences in icons between a clip that has just audio. You can see it's represented by just an audio waveform versus a clip and let's come back to our sequences here versus a sequence. So let's just double click on sequences just so that you can see the difference here between the three of them. And I'm just gonna call up audio. So you can see a waveform, what looks like a bunch of clips edited together, and then just a clip. Okay, so let's take our music and I'm just gonna bring it up here into my preview window. And you can see that the tracks are already mapped to tracks one and two in your keyboard. And I'm simply gonna hit T to mark this entire shot. And then I'm gonna hit B in the keyboard to edit my music in. Now, one thing that I do wanna show you, because this is one question I get asked all the time, is audio waveforms. Now, how do I show audio waveforms? Well, for me, normally I don't look at audio waveforms because I use my ears to tell me what I wanna edit and where my edits are gonna happen. But if you prefer working with audio waveforms, they're also very simple to access. But what I wanna do first is I'm gonna save this timeline view. And what do you mean by that, save this timeline view? Well, guess what? I can save bin views. I can also save timeline views. I'm gonna navigate down here and I'm gonna save this as normal. What I'm gonna do is again, come down to my hamburger. I'm gonna click on the hamburger right here. I'm gonna come up to audio data. And of course, inside here, we have access to our waveform just like that. What I'm also gonna do again, much like when I was in my frame view and I wanted to enlarge the size of the frames, I'm gonna press command and L inside of my sequence here to increase the size of the selected tracks. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate down here and I'm gonna call this audio waveform just like that. And now what I can do is easily toggle back and forth between normal view and my audio waveform view. And again, much like with my bin views, if I come up to settings, I can simply drag all the way down to the bottom and there's my two timeline views right there, ready to be copied to another project or to have someone else's timeline views copied from their project into mine. So I'm just gonna go back to my bin view here and I'm just gonna go back to normal view. And you can see now that we have a fairly standard sequence with video and with audio in it. Now there's a couple other workflow things that I wanna show you because essentially that's basic editing inside of Avid's Media Composer. We're gonna get into more complex techniques in later episodes. But what I wanna show you is a couple other things. First of all, 
match frame. Now, match frame in most cases is found within the command palette, and it's something that you're going to want to map onto your keyboard. Now, what is match frame, you ask? Well, match frame, fairly self-explanatory, is if I come back, and let's just come over here, and actually this is something good to talk about first. You can see that I have my viewer right here, and my viewer right now is looking at the topmost layer down. So you can see that it's showing me this clip in my timeline right here in my sequence window. But if I wanted to see the clip below that, all I have to do is navigate over and click down one layer, and there's the clip below that. Now, something also important to keep in mind, what I'm going to do is just come back to the top, is if I wanted to solo this layer. So let's say, for example, you can see that as I drag through, I can see where this clip comes in. But let's just say I only wanted to see the clips on that layer. What I can do is I can come over here to the little monitor, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Command on the Mac, Control on Windows, and I'm going to click on that monitor, and you're going to see that it turns green. Well, you'll see now that if I come back, the only thing that I'm looking at is what is on this channel. So I can now drag down and just see what is happening right there. This is going to become more relevant when we start talking about effects, but I wanted to show that to you right now because we were talking about it. But what I was actually getting to, and I'm just going to hold Command and I'm going to click on my monitor again, is if I come down to the lower level and I have this clip here and I want to match frame this clip because maybe I'm not happy with where it starts or maybe I'm not happy with the clip at all, but I want to see where it is and what's going on with it. Now I have this mapped to my keyboard. Now if you don't happen to have match frame mapped to your keyboard, you can map it over here onto your buttons. And let's map it over calculator right here. So what I'm going to do is navigate up to tools and I'm going to come down to the command palette and let's just drag down here. And I believe match frame is in other. Yes, it is. It's right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to say this is going to be a button to button reassignment. And let's take match frame and let's put it right over top of calculator just like that. What I can do now is close that. And if I want to see this clip over here in my preview window, I can simply hit match frame and there it is right there. Now for me, I have match frame mapped to F7 on my keyboard. What I like to do is have the function keys mapped to most of the common things that I do all the time, match frame, find bin, remove effect, and things like that. Now you heard me mention find bin, which is another great one. So let's say I'm working in my timeline, I've match framed this clip, but I want to see what bin it's in and where exactly this clip is. Well, you know what, no problem. Again, what I can do is come back to tools, I can come down to command palette, and you'll see right in here we have a function called find bin. Now, it just so happens that this is actually already mapped over here on your preview window. And what I can do is simply say find bin and you can see right away Media Composer shows me exactly where that clip is in my bin. If the bin wasn't open, Media Composer would open that bin for me and again highlight it for me ready to go. Now, there's one last thing that I want to show you before I wrap up this tutorial. And that is one of my favorite commands, and that is extend. And extend is something that's very simple, very simple concept, and most people end up having to do it with trim and other nonlinear editing applications. But you don't need to in Media Composer. Let's say I wanted to take this shot and I wanted to extend it a little bit farther down. And I wasn't really sure, so what I was going to do is just play it. So I'm just going to hit play on the keyboard. And what I'm going to do is just because I have the music blaring in my ears here, I'm just going to turn it off for a second. I'm just going to hit play. And let's just say we're going to have it come right to about there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark an out point there, make sure that video two is selected, and you can see that I have the extend key right here. All I'm going to do is simply hit extend, and you can see that much like in a trim, the out point of the shot has now been adjusted to the out point in my timeline. Extend is a key that I've got to use five to ten times every hour of every day that I'm editing. It's just such a go-to command and it's a fantastic one to have access to inside of Media Composer. Okay, so we've really scratched the surface of editing, but you know what? We've tackled basic editing. We've handled cuts, we've handled dissolves, we talked about setting up audio and being able to view waveforms, and we even took a look at a couple of little bonuses like match frame and fine bin, and even extend to help speed up your overall workflow. Now, in the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at effects, and we're going to take a look at a common effect that you're going to use for probably about 90% of your effects work inside of Media Composer, and we're also going to take a look at creating titles because titles are a big thing as well. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, feel free to send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.